guys, this is Abram with Pathfinder TV, instructor of the Pathfinder School, coming at you with part 4 in the Axe Restoration series. The reason I say part 4, you guys may be thinking, because overall I said it was going to be 5 parts, but the second part I turned out to split into 2 sections. The reason is because it ended up being over 30 minutes, the overall length of the video, and I know you guys, a lot of you guys don't have the time to sit through and watch that, you'd rather it be broke up more easily digestible videos so that's what I decided to do so I split the cleaning and sharpening into two videos one of just the cleaning and the second one of sharpening and reprofiling that edge because there was none on there we got that taken care of now we're going to talk about actually attaching or hafting the head the axe head to the handle so the first thing what I'm going to do is test fit the axe head to this handle and I already measured it so I made sure the dimensions are going to be right but every specific or every um, particular handle is not going to be the same so it's going to be different on how it sits or rides on that axe head so what I'm going to do is take the axe head and set it in here make sure you have it in right some people put them in upside down but make sure you set it in there right and like I said I made sure this is the proper size for this head. I'm just going to set it down in there. So, it looks like it's going to fit pretty good. Make sure it's nice and flush across there when you put it on. Once you get that, I'm going to turn it upside down. I'm using, in this situation, a rubber mallet. You can use a dead blow hammer, which is just a weighted hammer that's going to decrease the damage you do on this. If you decided to use a metal object up against this, I would definitely um, support this, pat it over with something, whether it's foam, just a rag or something, but definitely I would not recommend to use something metal because it's going to um, mar up this handle or the end grain on this handle and you could pop it and split it all the way down. That's not what you want. So hold it above the ground, above the floor, and strike the butt of the handle. Just like this. Once you do that, and what I can see right now is it's starting to tilt, the edge is starting to tilt down, which is alright. I'll just level it out in a little bit. It's going to do that quite a bit, actually. Just beat the bottom back to where it needs to be. Once you get that, you're going to beat it down as far as you can possibly get it. And you're going to start to see this grain here, or this wood, where the axe, the bottom of the eye of the axe, is getting very tight and starting to curl over this wood and that's a sign that you need to pull this off and then take your rasp or whatever you're using sandpaper rasp belt sander and remove that material right at that mark ideally you want this axe head once it's finished to sit all the way on this shoulder so I've got to pound it quite a bit more but make sure you do it in a nice um, methodical way removing this material because if you remove too much you obviously cannot replace that material but if you remove less than you have to or less than you need to, you can always just take a little bit more off. So make sure you do this in a controlled manner. As you see, I'm going to pound this on a little bit more, let that curl up, and then take my rasp and remove it. So when this wood starts to curl up, I'll bring you guys back and show you exactly what you're looking for and exactly what you need to remove. You guys, again, exactly what you're looking for when you're beating on this so you guys get the exact idea. Opposed to trying to hit the head this way onto the handle you want to flip it upside down make sure it's floating in the air grab it probably I'm grabbing eight inches from the top that's just comfortable with this um, 36 inch handle I have right now or actually I believe it's 36 or 28 I cannot believe exactly but that's how I'm holding it with this specific handle take my mallet and beat on the butt of it And just slowly pound it back up or slide it back up as you need to. So far is my axe head is currently pounded on as far as I could possibly get it for the first fitting. And from the top of the eye here, and you're overall you're gonna have probably about a good two and a half inches to go. So there's gonna be probably an inch sticking out and not to trim that off. But for the first fitting, I'm probably about two inches from the top. Which is not bad, just depending on the handle you have and how much shaping you're going to have to do. It's going to depend on the shape and dimensions of everything and just a whole bunch of different variables. But for this one, it doesn't look like I'm going to have to do too much. But 
I'm not sure if I'm hoping you guys can see it, but there's a little bit of curling action going there. And since it's curling there, it's starting to cut in deep, so I cannot pound any farther down. And if I do, as you guys can see, this is not straight across anymore. It's the bottom of this, or the toe of the blade here, is tilting down because it can't go past this, so it's compensating and going forward, or going front heavy here. You don't want that. You want this to go on even, obviously, or it's just not going to look right. You do want this head a little bit facing down, but you don't want it anywhere near what I have it here. So what's left to do is get this bad boy off of here. So we're going to try to do that. I'm going to adjust the camera, get a different angle for you guys, and we'll get this axe head off of here and start to shape this handle to custom fit it to this axe head. Get the axe head off of the handle. You begin shaping. And to show you exactly what you need to shape, don't worry about it down here. I didn't get down here, but the wood was curling. It's just the way they shaped it. But majorly up here, as I showed you guys, you can see that the wood was curling right at that point. That's where the contact was. And when you get to the bottom, you want that curl everywhere because you don't want no gaps at all. So what I'm going to do is, you got a couple options. And again, I'm going to have to remove quite a bit. So I'm going to take my wood rasp and knock off that curve. And that's just an indication of exactly where I need to remove that material because that's where it's getting caught up. And if I want it to go any farther down this handle onto the shoulder, I have to remove that or it's just going to curl up and be an ugly mess by the time I get it down there. You can use this, some sandpaper. You can use this flap wheel. There's a wide assortment of different tools you can use, but whatever works for you is what you need to do. So I'm just going to remove this material in any other spot, which it wasn't catching anywhere, so remove right here, put it back on, repeat the process until I get it all the way down to that shoulder. Very simple, it just takes some patience, especially if you get a handle that's not the exact fit, or that hand, or that axe doesn't slide on, the axe that doesn't slide on perfect, that's all right. The more work you put into it, that means that the tighter it's gonna be on the bottom, and the longer it's gonna last, and it's gonna be a lot more functional of a tool, or a lot better tool than when you buy at a store and you get to know you, you've done it yourself. So I'm just going to remove this and then we'll continue along in the process. I, I ended up getting it pretty close to the shoulder exactly where I wanted it on that shoulder because I want it to get as far as I can possibly get it down on the bottom so that the seal on the bottom of the axe head is nice and tight and there's no gaps and that's exactly what you want because think about it, the gaps are just going to lead to more um, wiggle room if you do swing it and it's got that little gap to move or um, shift the head a little bit. You don't want that to happen. You don't want no shifting in that head throughout the swinging process. So you want it all sealed up nicely. I've got a little bit to remove for right here. And again, it's just with the wood curling over. That's exactly where you, you know you need to remove that wood. And I got some right back in here I keep catching up on. So I'm going to take this wood rasp, clean up right there, and then get ready to pound this on for the final time but when you do that the saw kerf that you have and that's a really important thing you need to look at when you're going to hang this because you want that kerf to be nice and straight across here which I showed you guys in the first part of this series but you want that to be a nice cut nice clean even cut with that saw kerf but by the time I get this axe head on there I want that saw kerf to run three quarters of the way down that axe head once I have it seated where I want it to be so once I have it seated on the shoulder I want that saw kerf to be adjusted all the way down three quarters of the way through that axe head once I have it seated so I'm going to probably have to adjust that a little bit there's one thing that house handles is notorious for is cutting their saw curves a little bit shy but that's all right because some companies cut them way down here and then if you have it sitting here and it's sticking out half the way the saw curve that's no good so I'd much rather the company just cut it short than too much so make sure you have that three quarters of the way down before you finally seat this on there and you should be good to go as far as I can with this project tonight, and I'll show you guys the reason. I've got this axe currently, pull that up a little bit, seated exactly where I want it on this shoulder. I've got approximately about an inch sticking up, which is perfectly fine. I'll trim it off once I get my wooden wedge in there, but that brings up the issue I'm having right now. The only wooden wedge I have for this will not fit this particular axe head, and I'll show you why. So if I go here and bring this up and I'm going to actually adjust the camera a little bit. I'll bring the camera a little bit closer and I'll explain why this wooden wedge will not fit this particular axe head. 
got the camera a little bit closer here and I apologize I'm having trouble getting all this lighting situation right so you guys can see but to the point of this is at, up at the top here I've got a little bit of a gap right there and that's okay I just need to make sure my wedge is the full length of this axe eye up here the dimensions up there I have to make sure it covers everything I cannot have it just cover here because I'm gonna have that little loose gap and again that brings up the point of this wiggling around and if that happens it's just giving it more room to move around if you're swinging really hard or hit something really hard it's gonna give that much more give right in that area so you need to make sure this wedge from here to here covers the whole thing and in this case the wedge they supplied with this one does not do so so I need to make sure I get a wedge that's measured correctly so I'm gonna take in the task of actually making my own wedge tomorrow I'm gonna pick up some either walnut and that's what I'm hoping to get because that nice dark brown walnut color is gonna look good in contrast with this axe handle it's gonna look real nice up there I've seen guys do it and I like that or I'll just get some red oak and that will work just fine. Anything that's hard, you cannot use pine. You can, but the only problem you're going to run into, pine, poplar, they're soft woods and they're going to rot a lot e easier than a harder wood and it won't last as long. So you need to make sure it's a harder wood that you're looking to get. So I'll go tomorrow and I'll pick up some either walnut or oak and I'm hoping walnut and we will take in the task of making the wedge and then we'll put it in here and we'll be good to go. But as you guys can see, I've got this seated on there really nice. I mean, there's no gap at all up through there. There's no spacing, which is what I really like. And that's what you're looking for. We'll just get that wedge made, put some glue in it, pound it on there, cut it off flush. Then we'll be ready to put the other wedge in there, and we'll be finished with this project. We'll just finish putting a nice polished, polished edge on there, and we'll be good to go. See, guys, I've got my piece of oak that I trimmed down. This is just a piece of oak I bought at Home Depot today. Um, I trimmed it down with my axe, so nothing perfect at all. But I'll tell you, it's a lot nicer than some of the wedges you will come across when you're ordering handles or getting them from Home Depot or places like that. So I'm happy with it, how it turned out. Um, it's trimmed down nice and even. I took some sandpaper, just sanded it up, made it nice and smooth. Now what I'm going to do is, before I put the head on for the final fit, I'm going to make sure that saw curve is where it needs to be, so it's three quarters of the way down. Um, the axe head once it's seated on the shoulder, which is what you want. But while I'm doing that, actually before, I just thought about this before I do that, but I'm going to set it on there, actually cut the saw curve, set the axe head on there, and then measure this and see how much I need to trim off because I know I kept it long just in case. So I'll trim a little bit off to get it to sit in there nice and perfect and cover everything. And then I will soak the wedge in this boiled linseed oil for you know 10-15 minutes just to give it um, lubrication and then I'm gonna actually soak the neck of this axe handle in um, boiled linseed oil too I'm just gonna rub some on there so it's lubrication as I pound the head on there and then we will seat this put some glue on it and then seat the wedge in, and we'll be good to go so first thing I'm gonna do is get that axe head and put it on the current handle axe head seated on the handle right now properly that's what I want I've probably got about a half an inch sticking out and that's Okay, because I'm going to cut it to about 3 16 once I get it, the wedge in there, the wooden wedge. But before I do that, if you look where my index finger is pointing right now, there's a little bit of a gap. I'm going to address that with just a little bit longer wedge so it covers the whole space there. So that wedge will cover it once I pound it in there. So what I'm going to do is line it up here. And sorry about the light, guys. It's very hard to get the lighting right up here line it up take my pencil and mark what I need to trim off which I marked right there put my axe to the side for right now once I do that you know just find where I marked which is right here take something to Trim it off. In this case, I'm just going to take my pocket knife here. Trim a little bit off at a time. Again, this is red oak, so it's some tough stuff. It ain't no walk in the park. Once 
once we do that, just keep doing that until you get the right fit that you need. That's all I'm going to do. Get my wedge shaped down to the exact shape that I want. I'm going to soak it in that boil linseed oil for approximately 15 minutes while I get the stuff for the glue set out. Then we will set this wedge, this wooden wedge, in the axe, the eye of the axe, and we will be good to go. One of the last steps now, and that is putting the wooden wedge into the actual axe head there, or the handle. I've got some glue on there currently, but I wanted to explain the glue that I'm using. I'm using Tight Bond Ultimate Wood Glue. It's wa it's a waterproof wood glue, so it's good to go. It seals it very well. Do not use epoxy. Find, find some sort of wood glue, um, whether it's Elmer's, Tight Bond, or whatever. I recommend Tight Bond, but whatever you have with you will work. Just make sure it's a wood glue. Put it on that wedge. You don't have to put it on there too um, generously, but just get it applied on there. Pretty good. Get something to smear it. And just do the other side. I pulled it out of that linseed oil and put it on a paper towel to absorb some of that excess linseed oil. Just put some wood glue on there. Take something. This is just a chip of that oak that I was carving on and smear it on there. And I'm actually putting it on here pretty thick, but it don't have to be this thick. Just some, something to make sure it holds. And again, you got to think this is going to have a lot of pressure on it anyways. Now what I'm going to do is hold this wedge, get my axe up this way, and set it in here. Make sure you have it lined up where you want it, then get something to get it started with, whether it's a mallet, hammer, I recommend a mallet, so you don't bust your wedge, make sure it's lined up good, now once you get it started, I'm going to take this outside onto some concrete flip it upside down and hit the butt of the handle. I'll bring you guys out there and show you. What I'm going to do now is make sure this is lined up exactly where I want it before I go pounding on it. In which this case it is. Just, just a little bit. Once you get that, instead of pounding up here, if you're hitting it on it um, unevenly, it could bust it. So I'm going to turn this upside down. Just like this. Lay it flat then hit on the butt of it. Just like this and you're just going to continue to pound it on there try your best to keep it even what I ended up with it didn't go perfectly even down there but it'll work it'll do the trick now I'm going to draw a line there so I can cut a nice even line at 3 16 of an inch above flush so it's going to be sticking out 3 16 of an inch finished halfing this off and that's what it looks like. I did do a little bit of a hiccup right there, but it's not bad at all. I just off-centered that wedge a little bit and had a little bit extra here, which is okay. But there are no gaps at all. It's just a little split, right? Not split, but a little gap. But right below it, there's no gap at all because it's all covered in there, the wedge is. So there's no problem there, but overall it looks very well. I'm very happy with it. And then on the bottom of it, like if you're looking up through here, there should be no gaps at all, and there's not. There's a lot of curl of the wood there, and that means it's tight, and that's what you want. So the last step is very controversial. Um, very controversial, and it's very tricky sometimes, and I'm kind of nervous right now thinking about it, but it's putting a metal step wedge in. The reason is, recently I just hung a plum. It was probably a three-pound head, and I went to put one of these in there, and I split it out. And I think the reason was, and if I can pull it out of here, maybe. Maybe there's another one in here. Let me look. There may not be. I'm not sure. Yep, there is. They send these big whopping wedges. These metal step wedges. That's what they really send. Just those. They're very big. And the bigger they are, the more unpredictable they are. And um, the more risk, the higher risk it is of you snapping or breaking the wedge. So... Tom Henderman, he's a guy I've been learning a lot from with hanging axes. He's probably been the number one help 
um, towards me. He's a very good guy, and he definitely knows what he's doing with this type of stuff. He's very good at it. He recommended to, he recommended to use a smaller wedge. These are just little hammer wedges. I bought at Menards in little small packs. They're made for hammers, but they're very small wedges. And the smaller they are, the easier they're going to be, and the less likely they are to split out. So when I go to put this in there, I'm actually going to bring the camera a little bit closer for you guys and show you exactly how I'm going to set this one in there. But there's tons and tons of ways you can do it, um, all from using dowel rods. Um, Tom Hinderman gave me that idea using like an oak dowel rod. I have one right here. You can drill. This is a 3 8 inch dowel rod. You can use a 5 16 inch hole and then trim or taper the end here and then pound this in there. Um, until it bottoms out and that works very well and it's a lot more predictable in that manner but in this case I'm just going to show you guys the traditional way of using metal wedges camera up close so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about here when I'm going to put this wedge in here this metal step wedge a lot of guys let's see if I can do this where you guys can see they like to put them in diagonal so right in the middle but diagonal so you can put them diagonal you can put them um, perpendicular to that wooden wedge or you can put one on each side, and one here, and one here. It's all up to you, or you can do the dowel rod. There's tons and tons and tons of ways to do this. That's why it's very controversial, um, because there's just so many ways you can do it. So this is not necessarily the right way to do it, but I'm going to stick one um, running completely perpendicular with that wooden wedge. And the wooden wedge, if you think, think about it, is spreading um, pressure from up towards that way and this way, because it's pushing out each way. When I put this wedge in, it's going to apply pressure side to side, so this side to this side. So I'm having pressure in all four directions, and that's going to um, make this axe last a lot longer in that way. So I'm going to center it right here and put it right there, running completely perpendicular to this wooden wedge, and I'm only going to use one small step wedge. I'm happy to say that the wedge turned out very well. No splitting at all. I mean, just a little bit, but that's just from being tight. That's no concern at all, but very well. Worked out perfect, in my opinion. It's not going to be perfect because it's only my fourth axe I've hung. Um, but in my opinion, it's pretty darn good. I'm happy with it. Once you pound that metal wedge in there, that step wedge, you want to take a punch or something and pound it one time just to get it below. Um flush so it's not like flush on there you want it below flush um, for aesthetics and just functionality I mean it's not going to do anything if it's not but just for more, um, more safety or security I'm just going to take some sandpaper and clean the top up a little bit and I've got another one in the books I'm happy very happy with the results of this one I want to thank you guys for sticking around for this axe restoration series. This is part four. Um, I believe it's part four. We have done uh, talking about materials. Second one was cleaning the axe head. Third was sharpening. Fourth, this is the fourth part, and that's cleaning up. Um, not cleaning up, but actually getting the axe hung or hafted into the handle here. The fifth part is going to be fit and finish. So I'm going to put some kind of sealant on here, some boiled linseed oil. I'm going to clean up, um, finish the sharpening process on this edge. And then the sixth part is going to be making a leather sheath for this axe. I hope you guys enjoyed this series so far. I hope, I hope you guys are learning a lot. This has been Abram with Pathfinder TV, instructor at the Pathfinder School. If you have any questions, take them to the Pathfinder Learning Center on Facebook. Share this video with your friends. Tell your friends to subscribe. We all appreciate it at the Pathfinder School. Thanks for watching this video and I will catch you next week on the next one. Take care.